number one. I've been a long time stalker of this page, and I have a story of my own that still haunts me to this day. Let me set the scene for you. I was seven years old, and currently 25, and my mother was dating a man who had a daughter who was around 15. Her name was Christy. While she didn't live with us, she did stay with us some weekends. The reason this is important will come into play a little later. I grew up in a moderately isolated area in the south. My mother's house is on about 90 acres, most of it being heavily wooded. For the most part, it was quiet, the type of place most people don't even lock their doors, and everyone knows each other. It was quiet, until one sequence of events shook my community to its core. There was a man, just two streets over from mine, who murdered his girlfriend and her entire family in their home over a dinner, just two weeks before this event took place. It was also learned later that he had also murdered his mother and father in their home, as they were found after his girlfriend's family was. He hadn't been caught, and the local police had been working with cops in Tennessee, as there had been reports of people citing him there. My mother had gotten a security system installed, just to ensure our home was properly secured. We had alarms on every window and door in our house. On this Saturday, my mother got called into work, as she was an apartment manager, and there was an emergency she needed to tend to. Her boyfriend had gone to work early that morning. Now, my mother was very, very nervous about leaving and due to the nature of the emergency, she thought it was best that Christy and I stayed at home where we were safe. Safe, so she thought. She reluctantly left, and let us know that her cell phone was always going to be on if we needed her. Christy and I promptly set the alarms and made sure all of the windows and doors were locked. My mother had been gone about an hour, and we were deep into a movie on Disney, eating pizza. Suddenly, the alarm started blaring. Christy and I jumped up to see what was going on. On the way to the alarm, you have to pass a very large, sliding glass door. What we saw there left us frozen. There was a man, prying our door open with a crowbar. He saw us, made eye contact, and quickly ran off into the woods behind my mother's house. I'll never forget what he looked like, or the sinister look he had in his eyes. We called the police, and then we called my mother, who had already been alerted by the alarm company. My mother actually arrived before the police did, due to how isolated we really were. When we described the man to the police, they immediately knew this was the man they were looking for. Of course, there was a massive investigation that day of the property and the woods that surrounded us. In the woods, they found cigarette butts, lots of canned food, soda bottles, and a makeshift tent made from a tarp. The man had been living behind us the entire time, and even stealing food from our trash. When he was arrested, which was a few hours after the incident, he had admitted to watching our family to learn our habits, knowing that he could take advantage of the house when no one was there. Even now, as an adult, this event still follows me. Just goes to show, you never really know who's watching you. Number 2 I personally don't know who did this, but my grandma does. Back in the 70s, they had a family party. This guy put rat poison in a coke bottle, back when they had those releasable metal caps. Then, he left it in the fridge with the rest of the cokes, for whichever unlucky family member would drink it. My uncle was maybe seven at the time, and he snuck it. The kids weren't allowed soda, so maybe whoever poisoned the cola didn't think a kid would end up with it. He had ended up killing my uncle. My grandma lied about it, and I was always told some kid at school did it. 
My dad or his sister could have just as easily been the victims themselves, but they were too scared to drink the cola, fearing they'd get in trouble if their parents caught them. For years, I was convinced they might have been connected with the mob, since my family is Italian. That's just a hunch, though. I think it was more of an arsehole way of playing Russian roulette with coke. Nothing ever came of it, and despite the fact it was her own son who died, my grandma never revealed the killer. Why that might be, I don't know. I'm assuming more than one person knows, but since she didn't do anything about it, no one said or did anything. Number 3 I've had a lifetime of weird experiences, so I could bang on all day about them. But for now, we'll go for the one which was probably not more than a strange coincidence. But still, it freaks me out. Driving to work a few years ago back on a hot summer morning, the skies were clear and blue, and the sun was already beating down. I guess it must have been around 7.30am. I was listening to a local radio station, with not a single fuck to give about anything. I was chilled out, and happy to be alive. As I pull out from a junction and join the queue of traffic slowly crawling towards the town centre, I spot a very odd-looking woman just across the road from me. Now, I don't have the best memory for details, but I do very clearly recall that she was about middle-aged had very unkempt, shoulder-length hair, like really scraggly, and I could tell from both her facial expressions and her gait that she wasn't all there mentally. She was hobbling along in an awkward and erratic manner, apparently staring down at the pavement with this weird expression on her face. It's hard to explain. Anyway, just as I'm being a judgmental piece of shit and thinking, well, fucking hell, she looks mental. This woman snaps her head up from glaring at the floor and perfectly meets my gaze. Her eyes lock onto mine, and this fucking awful, twisted grin appears across her face. At that very same moment she locks her eyes onto me, the radio goes batshit crazy. Think somewhere between a distorted signal and static. After a couple of seconds, she looks away, and carries on about her business. As she averts her gaze, the radio returns to normal, and my blood turns to ice. I haven't seen her since, and no offence to her, but fuck all of whatever that was in its entirety. Number 4 this happened back when I was 21 and living in downtown with my boyfriend. I had just found out that my boyfriend, who I'd been with for almost four years, had been cheating on me. We were invited to a Halloween party that night and had initially declined the invite, but then I found out about the cheating and told him I was going. He could stay home if he wanted. We were in the process of breaking up and dividing our assets. Anyway, the breakup is relevant to my frame of mind. We lived in a rather sketchy area of downtown. One of those brand new apartments built in a slummy area sort of things. I'm in my car, and any other night, I'm the type of person who keeps the windows up and all of the doors locked until out of the area immediately surrounding our apartment. However, my mind was understandably elsewhere and I had both driver and passenger windows down so I could smoke a cigarette. The first red light I came to on my way to the party was still in the shady part of town. I'm the first car at the light, so I have full view of a twenty-something guy crossing the crosswalk left to right in front of my car. Suddenly, he looks over and makes eye contact with me. I'm flicking ash from my cigarette out of the window at this point, I may have done a polite head nod, I can't really remember. Next thing I know, he picks up his pace and walks over to my passenger side window, leans into my car, and asks if he can have a light. When flustered, I tend to be polite, so without really thinking, I hand him my lighter. I was totally prepared to just pull away when the light turned green and let him have it. 
That's when, instead of reaching for the lighter, he reaches into my car and lets himself in, and just sits down like we're old friends. At this point, the light turns green, and I grab my purse and wedge it between my left leg and the driver's side door. Apparently, I was more concerned with being robbed than the darker alternatives. He thanks me for giving him a ride, and I slowly pull away from the stoplight and ask him why he got into my car. He replies that he could tell I wanted to give him a ride, and launches into an obviously fabricated story about needing a ride because his girlfriend had just broken up with him and left him stranded downtown. I tell him I'll take him to the nearest gas station, as I needed to get gas. I actually didn't. It was just the closest place to our location which was well lit and sure to have people. The gas station was only about six blocks away, but it was the longest six blocks of my life. He tells me I'm pretty, and asks if he can have some money to get a cab home. Like an idiot, I offer him four bucks in quarters I keep in my car for the parking meters. At this point, I think I was just ready to make him stop talking and leave me alone. Instead, he starts throwing the quarters one by one down the cleavage of my shirt. What the fuck? Then I see it. The gas station. I pull in and tell him we both need to get out so I can pump. He hesitates, and then gets out. I have never locked my doors so fast in my life. I walk inside, telling him I needed to prepay. Instead, I find the first group of people I can, and explain the situation. Since it's Halloween weekend, they're all costumed up. At this time, a guy with the group I'm talking with comes in and tells his buddies that the guy is out there telling him I'm his girlfriend, and that I accidentally drove away with my purse on top of the car. Um, no. This group of college kids ended up going outside, making him leave, and then sticking around until I was back in my car and on my way. I have absolutely no idea what the unwanted hitchhiker's intentions were, but I doubt they were good. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this relatively short video. Um, up next, I'm going to try and make some sort of horror countdown video, either on the uh, creepiest mysteries that have actually been solved, or like a conspiracies and music type of video. Everyone loves a good conspiracy theory, right? <laughs> anyway, something along those lines, I think. I'm also going to try and throw together a compilation video of all my best stories I've read this year, and that one's for all of you guys who like to just chill out to a long video. You know, kick back, relax. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll get those out in the next few days or so. A special thank you to Anthony Salinas for the thumbnail for this one. Be sure to check him out via the description in the link below. <laughs> in the link via the description below. Bloody hell, confusing myself now. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to smash that like button or I'll smash you. And I'll be back again very, very soon. Until then, guys, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.